Welcome back. In this video, you're going to learn about another way that you can change the force of a muscle by changing the number of cross bridges. The next topic is changing the frequency of the stimulus. In this graph, uh, we can see, just as we did in the last video, that um, when there is an action potential generated within the muscle cell, right? depolarization, repolarization, this trigger, triggers that excitation, contraction, coupling, all of those steps in there, release of calcium, et cetera. Um, and so by the time you get to cross bridges, and the cross bridges form and the sarcomere shorten and shorten and shorten, um, it takes a few milliseconds, right, a latent period, before tension starts to be produced. Okay, of course, without another stimulus, the muscle is going to relax fairly quickly. Right, cross bridges release, calcium is uh, pulled back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and um, tension reduces. Okay, here is another stimulus, latent period, contraction, lots of cross bridges forming, and relaxation when calcium goes back and cross bridges stop forming. Okay, um, so one stimulus, one muscle twitch. If you stimulate this muscle cell before it fully has a chance to relax. That is before all the calcium is back, before all the cross bridges stop. What happens is that, yes, here's the, um, the shortening of the sarcomere, but before relaxation takes place, here's another stimulus and the cell is stimulated again. Okay, so now, once again, more calcium is released into the sarcoplasm, more cross bridges are able to form, and quickly, because, you know, it's still kind of uh, activated from the last twitch, and so what happens here is that the tension, the strength of the twitch actually sums together, right, so instead of contraction, relaxation, rest, contraction, relaxation, rest, you get a stronger contraction, right? And there's no rest in between these two. It just gets stronger and stronger and stronger. This concept or this uh, process is called wave summation or twitch summation. So essentially an action potential arrives at the neuromuscular junction before the muscle cell has had a chance to fully relax, right? So the two twitches sum together. Um, and really, this is a story of calcium. Again, there's calcium left over in the sarcoplasm, and so there's still some active sites wide open. There are still some cross bridges that are formed left over from the last twitch. And so there are, um, so if you continue to stimulate the muscle cell right, over and over and over again, essentially those muscle twitches fuse together, right? And the muscle, produces more and more and more tension. Okay. Um, so what this graph is showing us are um, actually four different scenarios. Here's a single twitch. This is the stimulus, brief latent period, contraction, relaxation. In wave summation, two uh, twitches are summed together. Here we see the second stimulus arrive before a full relaxation. And so the second one is um, a little bit stronger than the first. Right? Like you wouldn't experience two different twitches here. You would experience one um, single twitch. Um, and if you just keep stimulating the heck out of that muscle cell, the contraction is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. Okay? Um, and so this scenario here is called unfused or incomplete tetanus. Um, what we can see is that there are little peaks, right? Um, but you know what you would experience is again just the tension increasing smoothly, um, stronger and stronger and stronger. So you can think of like you know holding a cup as you pour water into the cup, um, the cup gets heavier, and so your muscles have to produce more and more tension in order to hold the cup in the same place. And so unfused incomplete tetanus would be occurring there because you get you know, stronger and stronger and stronger. The muscles aren't moving, they're not changing or anything, but they are getting stronger and stronger, okay? Um, and of course, anytime you are um, like uh, 
like holding the book, right? My muscles right now to hold the book in this position are completing unused tetanus, right? So to have the strength to hold up the book for more than just a millisecond, this is required, um, or this unfused tetanus is required to make that happen. Okay. Um, and what you might be wondering about uh, now is what the heck is this all about? Um, this is called fuse or complete tetanus. So here you stimulate the muscle cell so quickly that there is physically no time whatsoever for the muscle cell to relax. Um, and so this produces um, essentially superhuman strength. So we can see that this tension is much higher um, than any of the other tensions that can be produced um, under just plain old twitch, summation, or um, unfused tetanus. Um, and so this sustained contraction produces, again, superhuman strength. Um, this is mostly a condition that's seen in the lab. Um, you know, when you stimulate it with electricity over and over and over and over again, um, in real life, this is super rare. Um, so this would only really be seen um, if you are in uh, some kind of a dire emergency, right? So you like see someone get hit by a car and they're under the car and you go over and, you know, like Superman, lift up the car and pull them out from under it. Um, on any other day, you, there's no way you're gonna physically be able to lift up a car, but in this emergency situation, um, you can do it because of adrenaline. Um, and because you are stimulating your muscle cells to contract so frequently. Okay, so again, fused tetanus, stimuli arrive so quickly that there is no time for relaxation whatsoever. And all of the twitches fuse together, producing superhuman, um, super rare strength. Uh, there's one more um, type of uh, muscle contraction that depends on the strength of the frequency of the stimuli. And this is called trep or treppe um, is a German word meaning staircase. Um, and so this type of muscle contraction occurs um, when a when a muscle cell is stimulated to contract before all of the calcium, is removed from the sarcoplasm, um, but there is a full contraction and a full relaxation in between, right? So in this circumstance, there's still a little bit of calcium. And so um, a lot of cross bridges can still form and every subsequent stimulus shown here in blue um, produces a bigger and bigger and bigger contraction or tension force that is produced by the contraction. Um, of course, there is a limit, right? Just by the strength of the muscle cell itself, um, like how many cross bridges are physically in the muscle cell. Um, but uh, overall, bigger and bigger contractions, just like a staircase would be. Uh, this is really not seen in skeletal muscles. Um, this is generally seen in cardiac muscles. Um, and this makes sense because your heart, um, the heart muscles have to shorten to contract, pumping blood out. And then after the heart pumps once, they need to fully relax, fully open up, letting lots more blood come into the heart. And then a full super strong contraction, ejecting blood, full relaxation, except more blood into the heart, full contraction, eject blood back out. So in the heart, you need to have this full contraction, full relaxation in order for the heart to work properly, All right? And the way that you actually get um, the full contraction, full relaxation is a long um, refractory period, right? So a period when um, the cell can't physically be stimulated again, okay? Um, so let's compare all of these together. Um, here we can see um, wave summation. Right? So multiple uh, waves are being summed together. Um, if you keep on doing that, um, ultimately you get incomplete tetanus, so you can like hold the book steady for a while, right, um, with lots and lots of force. Um, if you stimulate really, really quickly, um, you can produce superhuman strength. Um, all of those waves are completely fused together. Um, and in TREP, 
um, you get a full contraction, full relaxation. I see that there's no full relaxation here, um, but the peaks get higher and higher until you reach some maximum tension. Okay, so this is found in the cardiac muscles. Um, these are found in the rest of your skeletal muscles, and this can be in your skeletal muscles under an emergency. All right, so that is the second way that we can um, increase the tension within our muscles given a change in cross bridges.